Well, today we have Dr. Ravi Gupta and he's practicing in Jaipur, Rajasthan. We're going to be talking uh, about uh, kidney stone management and also a little about uh, BPH. Well, very welcome, sir. Yeah, so the very first question which comes to my mind when we talk about kidney stone management is why do you think the number of cases of kidney stones are on the higher rise thesis? Uh, I stay in, I practice in Rajasthan, Jaipur. So Rajasthan and Gujarat, these are the stone belt. So we, we see a lot of patients who have been suffering from the stones because of the natural habitat. Yeah. Definitely with the dry tree modification, dry tree intake what we have, the lesser liquid intake. So these all are the, the genetic factors also. These are the factors which uh, potentiate or aggravate the stone formation. Mm -hmm. uh, if you could recall uh, one of your most challenging case when it comes to kidney stone and how did you tackle that? How did you remove the patient's stone? See, stones is a is a normal day-to-day -day practices. Yeah. I operate about 50 to 60 stone patients per month. I operate upon them. So the most challenging, we see a lot of challenging patients. Uh, yeah, I remember it was a, such a huge stone that it, it you know, occupies almost the entire kidney, uh, filling each and every part of the kidney. And the stone bulk was around 14 to 15 centimeter was the stone size. Oh my! God. That is the thing which. I took, I think that it was one of the major cases, I mean the big uh, stone which I have dealt with, but stone is a normal, you know, our day to day practice, so we do not have any, anything. Um, How did you tackle that? We have operated upon that and the patient is absolutely fine. So, so uh, the, the kidneys were sacrificed or uh, no, no, kidney, no, 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 we are, we are no talking of the kidney, the management of the kidney stones. Kidney was fully functioning yeah. despite having a, such a big stone. Mm. But the stone was managed beautifully and he was stone free in a single surgery. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, we have a greatest misconception when it comes to kidney stones. Would you like to break any of them? The misconception of the kidney stone, the peep, peep, uh, were the uh, biggest, I mean the most frequent question which is being asked by the attendants that, uh, when we remove the stone, then it will form again. So, see what we are doing uh, as a surgeon, as a urologist, we are removing the stone. We are not removing the cause of the stone, uh, you know, the formation. Stone formation, the stone, the building up of stone again and again depends on your own dietary habits, yeah. your genetic aspect. So, we need to address that. If you address that, then stone formation will definitely be reduced. Mm -hmm. It's being said, that uh, you know when the patient is having a stone so th there is a 50 percent chances of stone formation in next five years oh the statistic says that so you have to take care of certain things if you take care of those things then definitely the stone the recurrence or the reformation of the stone will certainly be restricted well uh, i would like to ask you what are your curative uh, measures which you take uh, when it comes to the patient with the, the kidney stones when we talk about the surgical methods uh, so there are two ways of uh, you know, there are three ways of removing the kidney stone. One is with the medical management. Yeah. So any stone which is lying, you know, docile in the kidney, which is not causing obstruction and which is less than a centimeter, okay. less than 10 mm or a centimeter can be treated conservatively until otherwise it's got, you know, stuck up in the passage or causing pain. So anything which is less than one centimeter can be dealt with the medical management. Mm -hmm. If the stone is bigger than a centimeter, then the options of the surgical intervention comes. So there are two ways of removing the kidney stone. One is with the standard technique which we call the PCNL or a mini PCNL or a micro PCNL. These are the three different techniques, uh, modified techniques in which we made a puncture through the back uh, into the kidney and then we enter into the kidney, mm -hmm. we remove the stone with the laser and come out. But in all of these things we have to make a puncture, a hole in the back to enter into the kidney. What I do in since last 15 years, I don't normally puncture the you know back I don't puncture the kidney I do with a which is called RIRS RIRS is a retrograde intrarenal surgery so retrograde means going from below from the urinary passage up to the bladder to the ureter to the kidney from below mm -hmm. and then uh, there's a flexible ureteroscope mm -hmm. which the tip is flexible and it goes in each and every part of the kidney and so that from below we go to the kidney and from that uh, ureteroscope we use the laser and pulverize the stone in each and every part of the kidney. So this is the technique which is least invasive, yes. which, do, which does not tamper the body, mm -hmm. does not tamper the kidney and both the kidney can be dealt simultaneously. So wow. this is the standard of technique. But here yes, the limitation is the stone has to be around 2 cm or 2.5 cm. Okay. Obviously the stone is so big you cannot go in and remove the stone. Right, so right. it has to be 
uh, around 2.5 centimeter stone can be dealt easily with this technique. Right. So uh, we're going to be switching the topic to BPH, wherein I would be asking for the curative measures when it comes to the BPH patients. Yes. How you go about it? So for the BPH, as we all know, it's called benign prostatic enlargement, yes. and we have good medications, you know, for the BPH, as we all know. But there are certain indications to go ahead with the surgical management. So there are five indications, five absolute indications for the surgi um, surgical aspect. One is the recurrent retention of the urine. Okay. If you have a retention twice, despite taking the medication, you require surgery. Mm -hmm. You have a recurrent UTI, you have a recurrent blood in the urine. You have a significant urine holding up after passing the urine, which is causing the kidney to swell up and causing the creatinine to rise. Oh. And number five is patient is on a medical management who is not convinced or who is not being treated fully with the medical management. So these are five categories of the patient who require surgical intervention. Okay. So my practice since last 18 years, I do, there are two ways of removing the prostate. One is the standard TURP. Okay. So TURP is a transurethral dissection of the prostate which everybody does. It's a basic bread and butter is in as a, as a urological training we treat, we've been taught and we are, you know, treating our residents to do that. But I do, I don't do TURP, I do with the laser which is called HOLAP. The standard of care is a holmium laser. So I do with the HOLAP which is called holmium laser enucleation of the prostate. So okay. it's a certain advantage of this HOLAP over the TURP. Okay. Could you please elaborate on the advantages, sir? The biggest advantage normally, you know, with the HOLAP, uh, we don't need to do, you know, stop the patient antiplatelets. Mm -hmm. The blood thinners, the patient of mostly our, uh, the BPH patients are a geriatric patients, the yes. elderly patients. Mm -hmm. They are mostly having a diabetes, they are hypertensive and they have a cardiac issue. So they are having, you know, they are on the antiplatelets, the blood thinners. So for the HOLAP, I don't need to remove, uh, stop the antiplatelets. Even the patient on two antiplatelets, clopidogrel and ecosprint combined, need not to be stopped before the HOLAP and you don't see a significant bleeding. I would say you, you don't see even the minimal of the bleeding. Oh. So you, th there's no need to stop it, hmm. number one. Number two, the fluid which we use while doing the HOLAP is a normal saline, which, which contains the, you know, the electrolytes same as what the body fluid is. So there is no tampering with the electrolytes, uh, there is no electrolytes, uh, you know, imbalance in the body after the surgery. Right. And uh, the biggest advantage, third one is the patient uh, does not have, you know, a kind of dysuria or a burning after the surgery. And I remove the catheter on the very next day after doing the prostate. So patient goes home to, uh, I mean, next day, you know, without any, having any burning and absolutely clear urine. Wonderful. So this is the advantage of HOLA. That is amazing. Well, any take home message for our viewers? So take home message, uh, yes, de definitely the stone should not be ignored. Yeah. You can take the different modalities, homeopathy, ayurvedic, allopathy, whatever you want to take it, but make sure that after seven to ten, seven or 10 days of the treatment, the stone is off the body, number one. You should not, you know, forget the stone in the body, otherwise you may lose your kidney. Oh. Number two, as a transplant surgeon, I am a transplant surgeon, so we should, uh, you know, create awareness on organ, uh, you know, donation. Yes. Because there is a, uh, as a kidney transplant surgeon, I know there are thousands of people, millions of people who are dying because of being shortage of the kidney. Oh. So if that, you know, deficit can be fulfilled by the cadavers, the brain dead patients, who are eventually, you know, uh, going to be buried or burned yeah. after two to three days, during that window when the brain is dead and the heart is pumping, if we can retrieve the organ. Then and how much time um, one need to go to uh, for, the, for the donation? After for that? donation, depends on which organ you are harvesting. Yeah, uh, we are talking about kidney. For the kidney, it is 12 hours. 12 hours. 12 hours or even 24 hours up to that window, you can uh, retrieve the kidney, hmm. keep it in the, uh, into the you know, ice box and then uh, you know, implant on the patient. Yes. Yes. Thank you so much, sir, for your valuable insights. Sir, it was very amazing Thank talking you. to you. Thank you so much. Thank you.